Well, in section five, we'll talk about minimum variance control and performance monitoring, and more in particular, we'll introduce the ARIS index. So we'll use the same framework as before. So the data is generated according to our data generating mechanism. So you have here the deterministic part, you have the stochastic part, so this is white noise here that is entering and the two are added to produce the output y of t and this side step that we are making well is going to be one in control but you're all future control engineers okay so this might be interesting for you. So the idea is to construct a controller that will construct the input of the system and I'll call it CQ and we'll call it minimum variance. This controller will select the input here in order to have the output variance as small as possible. And of course, we'll use feedback and as usual, well, we'll take a set point here and without lack of generality, we'll say set point is equal to zero. So we are really looking at the disturbance rejection that must be optimal. So this is really constructing a minimum variance control, right? So we have now a kind of benchmark. This minimum variance controller will be, when you consider linear controllers, the one that will be optimal in disturbance rejection in the sense that the variance of Y will be as small as possible. So the idea will now to will be to do performance monitoring. So this is really an interesting field. And what it does is use well, data from the closed loop system and monitor the control performance. Most of the time people have a tendency of to think, well, control performance monitoring is about tracking. So following a set point, and then there are questions like, what is the rise time, what is the settling time, and things like that. But you can also do performance monitoring and look at the disturbance rejection capability of your controller. So if you have a particular controller acting on your control loop, okay, we'll call it simply CQ, then it would be interesting to know how this controller compares with the kind of optimum okay and this will be given by the ARIS index and it's a number between 0 and 1 if you have one well then you have the optimal minimum variance control and if you have zero well the performance is really really bad when you compare with this optimal uh, minimum variance control and remember again this is in disturbance rejection the assumption that we make about the system the input output transfer function g of q is that it has a delay of k this is visible over here because you can see that the impulse response starts at l is equal to k since there is a delay of k well the first output that u of t can affect at time t is y of t plus k and therefore we will write y of t as the k step ahead prediction of y plus the error that you make and we have seen previously that this can be done using this decomposition of h that should become familiar right now so this is the term that is going to be associated to everything that is known at time t minus k and this is the term 
that is associated to everything that is unknown at time t minus k, right? And h bar of k is really a polynomial. You can see it over here, right? So you can construct this predictor, and we know that the well, unpredictable part is associated to this transfer function h bar that is acting on e of t. So we'll call it e of k t. And as you can see, well, e of k t is depending on e of t up to e of t minus k plus 1, right? Whereas the k step ahead prediction depends on well, the e of t is coming from the past up to time t minus k. Okay, so you can see, since e of t is a white noise, that these terms here, these two terms, will be independent. So if we write the variance, okay, you've got it over here. Well, it's the variance of this one plus the variance of this one. And this is because they were they are independent these two terms if they had been dependent there would be of course an additional term but this is not the case here and this is what we'll use well to construct the minimum variance controller so we have seen that the variance of y can be written in terms of the variance of well k step ahead prediction right and the variance of this error term e of k t right we have a process with a delay of k so you cannot affect this right so uh, given data up to time t minus k well your best guess of this one is zero and the only term that you can affect uh, you, because the process has a delay of k is this one so if you want to minimize the variance of y well this can be achieved by simply making this one here zero okay so by setting or by imposing that the k step ahead prediction of y is zero so We've seen previously that the k step ahead prediction can be written as follows. And again, this is using this decomposition in as follows huh? in two parts. Right? So if you want to make this one zero and you can act on the input using feedback well if you use this feedback over here okay so this is this one q minus k divided by this one over here so the h minus one q will cancel out and this is really the minimum variance control right well if k is equal to 1 then we have that h of q is 1 plus q minus 1 so i'm writing this one right times q h q minus 1 Right, so this one will be h bar, and this one will be h tilde. Right, so if you plug that in, this one and this one, huh, k is equal, will cancel out, and you will have this nice and easy expression of the minimum variance controller if k is equal to 1. Well, this expression is only valid if the input-output transfer function is inversely stable and we've seen in the course of digital control why we need this. If g of q would be unstable, there would be unstable 
between codes pull zero cancellations and this would go against internal stability let us have a look on how this looks like when we tackle an rmax model remember that an rmax model is well g of q is bq over aq right and h of q is cq over aq so if we use this idea of decomposing cq over aq so the noise model so this will be kq this will play the role of h bar k plus q minus k lq over aq okay and this will play the role of h tilde right and this is leading to this diophantine equation we've done this earlier in the course and if you plug that in this is the k step ahead prediction that you obtain so the minimum variance controller is the one that is going to act on you and make this k step ahead prediction zero so what you have to do is take this one times q minus k and divide by this one and this is really here the minimum variance controller right so what we can do now is have a look on how this looks like for k is equal to one again so we have well c q over a q so this is h q here k is equal to one so the first term and this k bar or oh, h bar sorry it will be one and this is also kq plus q minus k well k is one over here yeah and we have to make sure that this is the equation that holds so what we'll do is take q and then cq aq minus one right so h tilde kq is really q times cq minus aq over aq so the numerator here is l so this is correct right and we had already established that k of q is one so if you plug that in with k is equal to minus 1 here, you obtain this nice and easy equation. For the minimum variance controller for an Rmax model that has a delay of 1. Again, in order for this to work, the process has to be inversely stable. In this case, well, the zeros of the bq polynomial have to be outside the unit circle at the time of the exam i expect you to be able to explain what a minimum variance control is but since the expressions are a bit difficult in the general case i expect you to be able to do it in the case where the delay of the system is one okay so assume that the system has a delay of one then the first output that u of t can affect is y of t minus one or equivalently y of t well can only be affected by u of t minus one u of t minus two and so on right so it makes sense to write y of t as the one step ahead prediction and the error that you make and in this case the error that you make is simply e of t so as you can see here everything depends on 
what has happened before and at t minus 1. Since e of t is a sequence of independent variables, these two terms here are independent. If you write the variance of y, you can write it like this. Okay, so if you have the information up to time t minus 1, you cannot affect this one. What you can do to minimize the variance is to make sure that this one goes to 0. This is equivalent of saying, well, we'll make sure that the one step ahead prediction is 0. Well, this one step ahead prediction, I expect you to be able to find its expression and i stress find not learn by heart and as you can see you can make it zero by a controller that will act on y right and you simply take with the minus sign obviously this transfer function divided by this one and this will yield what we have found previously so for an RMAX model where g of q is bq over aq and h of q is cq over aq, well, you simply plug in into this expression and again, you find the minimum variance controller for the RMAX system. So what we'll do here is take a little example of an RMAX system and compare the open loop situation where the input is kept constant. Well, we'll take it at zero over here and we'll compare it with a closed loop situation where we use the minimum variance controller. And well, we'll simply set set point is equal to zero. This is really then disturbance rejection. So the system is an RMAX system that is described by this difference equation. And you should be able to see that this corresponds to an RMAX system with the A, B and C polynomials that are over here. So check that. And what you can see here is that the system has a delay of one. Right, so what we can do then is compute the minimum variance controller and we can do this with the formula of the previous slide, okay? So CQ minus AQ, this seems to be correct over BQ, right? And there is a well, simplification by Q minus one happening. And you can write this using the following difference equation okay from this to this equation this is really simple so check if you can obtain this we'll consider two situations one with the input is zero and we'll use a realization of e of t you will see that it's generated in matlab and we'll simply call it e of zero then we'll compare it with well, data generated in closed loop, right? So u of t will depend on y and we'll use the same realization E0. So what we'll compare, and this is here shown graphically, is the open loop situation where the input is simply kept constant to zero and the closed loop situation where we use the minimum variance controller to act on the input in such a way that the variance of y is minimum. The set point is here equal to zero. We are really looking at a disturbance rejection problem. And in a disturbance rejection problem, if you want to evaluate the performance of your controller you keep your set point constant and here for simplicity we have set it to zero so with the following code you can test things so this is the rmax model so this is the minimum variance controller and what is done over here is construct the closed loop transfer function over here a 
a realization of a white noise sequence with 1000 data, zero mean variance one is generated, and then it's used to generate the response in closed loop. So that's the response with the minimum variance controller and the response in open loop, and then you can just compare. So in green, you see the open loop response and in blue, the closed loop response with the minimum variance control. Remember that in the background, we have used the same realization E0 of the white noise sequence. So the idea behind control performance monitoring here for disturbance rejection is to compare the response with a given controller with the performance that you would have with the minimum variance controller and this will lead to the ARIS index and as you will see well you will not have to know the ideal minimum variance controller and you will only use closed loop data so remember that if the process has a delay of k right and if you're running the system with a minimum variance controller, well, you're left with the unpredictable part, okay, because of this delay K that you cannot um, remove. Remember that this is HK bar, and well, should sound familiar by now, this has been obtained by, well, decomposing HQ as follows right so h bar is the well, first k components of the impulse response associated with the noise model the variance of y if you're using a minimum variance controller will simply be the variance of this sequence over here because with minimum variance control you will make sure that this is zero and of course you can compute it it's sigma square because we know that e of t is distributed a gauss around the gaussian distribution of zero means invariant sigma square sigma square and then the sum up to index k minus one of the impulse response squared and this one will call well sigma square associated with the minimum variance control and so this will be our well benchmark value so we've seen that the minimum variance controller achieves a variance of y which is a sum l is equal to 0 to k minus 1 the process is a delay k right h of l squared and the whole thing times sigma square so this will be our reference value our benchmark value and obviously with an other controller well you'll have a variance of y that will be higher okay so what we'll do is compare and this is how we are going to do it the variance that you obtained with a given controller with the optimal variance that you could achieve with the minimum variance control okay this other variance over here will also depend on sigma square so the sigma square will cancel out so this is a metric that is independent of the underlying disturbances in the process and as you can see if here you achieve the optimal variance then you have a one and well from other controllers this variance will be higher than this one so eta will be smaller than one and if you have really poor performance it could go up to zero so the ARIS index is scale independent and is bounded in the range zero to one you will see that this ARIS index is computed from closed loop output data with the controller that you're running and that you want to well monitor 
in performance. The only thing that you have to know is the delay in the system. But what you don't need to know is G of Q. Okay, so the knowledge of G of Q is not necessary as long as you know the delay of that system, right? You will not have to do experimentation, so you can use routine closed loop operating data. So your process is producing and you measure the output, right? What you have is that, of course, you have to consider episode with constant set point. Okay, this is because the Harris index is a control performance monitoring index for disturbance rejection. Okay, and it will allow you to compare different controllers because you're each time benchmarking against the optimal minimum variance controller. So here we assume that the set point is zero. So you can compute the relation between E, the input, and Y, the output. So we'll compute the closed loop transfer function. So Y of T is, well, V0. So it's H0 Q here. E zero T. The zero is just because we are going to simulate it with a given realization of the noise. If you rerun the algorithm, you'll have another realization, and we could call it, for instance, E one. So minus uh, because I have a minus over here minus G zero Q C minimum variance Q y of t so without a surprise and i should write here closed loop the y closed loop is well h0 q over 1 plus g0 q and then the minimum variance controller e0 and we'll write it here as H closed loop E0. Not so like that. E0 T, right? So we would like to have access to this closed loop transfer function. We have measured data. So what we can do is obtain a model for this transfer function, right? And since there is no input, there is only noise, this is a time series, right? So what we'll be able to use is either an AR model or an ARMA model, right? So for an AR, well, you will model this as one over some polynomial, we'll call it CLP Q. And if you use an ARMA model, we'll model it like this. In this way, through modeling, we'll have access to this closed loop transfer function. So, if you're running a controller, it could be the minimum variance controller or some other controller, well, you end up with a relation between the input and the white noise input and the output, right? You can obtain these experiments while running the data simply in production. So you obtain a time series. And as I've said, if you want to have access to this transfer function, you can obtain it using system identification, using either an AR, an autoregressive model, or an ARMA model, autoregressive moving average in this case you can see that we've used an arma model so once you have identified the model what you can do is do a series expansion okay so this is what we've done over here and well if your process has a delay k as usual you can take the first k element up to index 
k minus 1 and then the remaining indices and well this is really something that is feedback invariant whatever the controller that you'll be using this part will not change right and well this one obviously will be feedback varying and if you're using the minimum variance controller this term here should be very very small so here we have rewritten this with a sum it's exactly the same expression as before and this is again this feedback invariant part okay so how could we obtain this decomposition well you know that it can be done using this equation if you plug in well your arma model in here you'll end up with a diophantine equation what you could do is start from the identified transfer function and do long division we have seen what long division is in the course of signals and systems and you will end up with the impulse response that you have then to split in well two terms a uh, feedback invariant term uh, because of the delay you know that uh, this part here where you range up to k minus 1 will not be influenced by the controller right and the feedback varying part that will actually depend on the controller so this term here does not depend on the controller it's not a function of the model and this is because of the delay of k in the system and it is only depending on the characteristics of the disturbance that is acting on the process so really with a minimum variance controller this second term here will be negligible so you can compute based on that well the performance okay which will be the variance of y in closed loop with this minimum variance controller even if you have run the experiment with another controller so that's the neat thing as you will see you do not need to know the minimum variance controller you simply take the k first elements in this sum you take the index from 0 to k minus 1 and this is the optimal performance with the minimum variance control obviously if you use another controller that is not the minimum variance controller these terms over here will not be negligible okay and then the variance of y with this controller well then you have to take all the terms okay so this will be the variance here that you have with the controller that you're benchmarking against the minimum variance controller and we'll just take the ratio of these two and then the sigma squares will as we've said before cancel out and this will be the Aris index so here's the algorithm well you run experiments with your controller that you're benchmarking okay and you'll end up with a relation that is like that it's a h closed loop and this h closed loop is based of course on g0 and the controller that you're benchmarking right e of t so this will be the closed loop relation so what we'll do is well select a model type so this means well either choose a r or arma the orders that's in a and c right you have to know the delay of the system okay so either you know because you know the process very well or you'll have to estimate it right then using a data set that you have collected on the system you will have here a data set okay and it will only be y clp from 1 to n it will only be output data so this is here a time series 
and this will allow you to obtain a model of this one. Okay, and once you have the model, since you know Q, you have to do this decomposition. And in MATLAB, because we are going to do this in MATLAB, obviously, well, once you have the model, you can compute the impulse response using the impulse. It will simply be generated. So you'll have access to these elements over here, right? And so then you define the ARIS index as follows. So you take the sum from L equal to 0 to K-1 of these impulse response element, but you have to square them, and then you have to divide by the sum of squares. They're ranging from 0 to infinity, right? So this is then an estimate of the performance that you would have with the minimum variance controller, and this is the performance that you have with the actual controller. But you see here, in this procedure, at no stage do I need to know the minimum variance controller. And I'm simply using a time series of data where you're simply running the controller in closed loop. Of course, since it's disturbance or rejection, you have to select well, sequences where the set point is constant. Let us simulate this using the example that we had considered before. Remember that we had computed the minimum variance controller and here we're taking some other controller and as you can see, it's obviously not the minimum variance controller. So here is a white noise sequence. We assume here again that the set point is zero and what we can do is will compute the output of the closed loop process. This is here, the closed loop transfer function and using the command filter, well, you can have the closed loop response. This is the one with the minimum variance controller and this is the one with this other controller. And obviously what we can do now is compare these responses. So these are the two responses. In blue, you have the response with this controller that is not the minimum variance controller. And in green, the response with the minimum variance controller. With the naked eye, it's very difficult to see which controller is best in disturbance rejection. So this is what is the idea behind the ARIS index is that you would have a number that tells you which controller is best in disturbance rejection. The ARIS index is computed as follows. So all you need is data in closed loop with the controller you're benchmarking. In this part here, it's we're benchmarking the other controller and here we're benchmarking the minimum variance controller. And then it's really an application of what we have seen in the course. We want a model of the closed loop transfer function. There is no input, the set point is zero. So we have a time series. So what we'll do is identify an ARMA model. And once you have the ARMA model, you can compute the underlying closed loop response. This is what we've called here HCLP hat, right? And then, well, you have to assume that you know the delay in the system. Okay, this is not so difficult to obtain. Here it's a one. You can obtain inferences through experimentation, right? Once you know the delay in the system, well, you can compute this eta hat, and it's a sum where L goes from 0 to K minus 1, and then we have to take the CLP squared, right? And then we divide the same sum where now L is ranging from 0 to infinity of HCLP squared, right? This is what is done over here. 
since k is equal to 1 in, in the numerator there is only one term okay and as you can see without knowing that we here we have done an experiment with a controller that is not the minimum variance controller and here that we have done an experiment with the one that is the minimum variance controller you can clearly see from the ARIS index that here we are very very close uh, because we are close to one to the minimum variance controller and here we are much further from one so this is not the optimal minimum variance control whereas when we look in the time domain well it was a bit difficult to see which controller gave best performances in disturbance rejection we can also have a look at the impulse response but then in a graph okay and see what happens this is the impulse response with the between quotes other controllers huh? so it's the control that is not the minimum variance controller and remember here that we have k is equal to one and well if it had been the minimum variance controller we would have expected here a value of one at lag zero but from then on it should be all zeros and this is clearly not the case so this is why in the denominator we will have something that is larger than one and a high risk index that is smaller than one if we have a look at what happens and this is really the identified closed loop impulse response and what happens with this minimum variance controller here clearly you can see that in closed loop well the impulse response is really that of an impulse right so we have a value of one at lag zero and all the other values are close to zero and this is explaining why we have an ARIS index that is very close to one